And then they got fourth at DAC, which I think was pretty decent. But the Super Major, they only they only placed in the eighth hmm. area. So not fantastic performances from either side. So both of them looking to set things up as we head into TI. We already have an early smoke from Doobie. Just scanning things out. Faith is going to try and go for disruption, but he's far too far away. That's a decent-ish smoke attempt. They're trying to figure out the lanes as fast as they can. So, those of you who are on stream, you saw the draft unfolds. Uh, we were talking, if you're listening in Dota TV, uh, you did get a little bit of Blitz and I's talk about the draft. Uh, we're going to see which way the bounty runes go before we break that down. It looks like Cuckoo's in a good position to be able to secure this top one. So, we're going to have an even split, uh, two on both sides. William... Who do you think has the winning draft and break down some of the twists and turns that uh, occurred in your mind? So the third pick storm was absolutely crazy. <laughs> it's like they, they picked that and then Newbie was like, we're picking Lion. Here you go. I mean, Storm Steward is literally the quintessential, like, is this a free storm game? And when there's three picks left in the draft, it can never be a free Somebody storm Somebody told game. me recently, they said, like, storm can only be played right now by, like, three people. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it was the people listed were Abed. Okay. Who was the other guys? Abed, Sumail, obviously, and I can't remember who the last person was. Was it not Armel? It was not Armel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's basically two strikes. Maybe it's a maybe it's TNC a Southeast Asia through. thing though. Yeah. Who knows? Mid one's actually a really good storm shirt too, and they were one of the secret was one of those teams that were early picking at it, if you recall. Yeah. Like they were probably the team that. Least relied on that perfect storm game pick. Right. And that's when a team's kind of scary, is when you can just open a hero like that. I think it, it opens up your draft quite a bit. The other hero that I would say is uh, kind of interesting is the Underlord. Uh, we just saw Vici Gaming try and play Underlord. They did lose that game uh, as they were facing up against, I believe, VGJ Storm. Yeah, just a weird hero. Yeah. I, I don't really know what his place is because in this dual lane meta where you want to trade it doesn't feel like it's the best. Because the strength of Underlord's always been that he's just kind of this this guy who runs to your lane, dies eight times, and he still kind of has farm. But yeah. that's no longer really the meta anymore. So that's why players like you are sort of garbage now, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just indiscriminately die. Uh, that's my specialty, though. It's like, oh, well, I got, I died nine times. Joke's on you, safe laner. Still got level six. It's like, you can't just get away with those shenanigans anymore. Tree Protector and Weaver both going for KP right now, but he is healing nice a decent thought. amount. And a good stun from Kaka. They are going to be able to get the another together. Air onto him. Cuckoo is dropping pretty low here. He's going to get hexed up. They do have a sentry already laid in place. He does manage to get off the fairy fire, and he's going to be okay. It's actually his own sentry. Uh, probably D warded newbie earlier. They're actually going to lay down a sentry now. Spot up the tree protector, but he does have the heal going. The burst damage is still too much, and it's KP who picks up the first blood. That's not only important just for the gold, but the fact that KP then gets that tremendous amount of regen from the death bulls. Yeah, they're just going to trade very efficiently in this lane. And that's kind of scary for TNC just because the tree is supposed to be the ultimate lane winner. Mm -hmm. Like this hero is not meant to lose lanes. You require a large amount of sentries just to play against him normally. And the amount of base damage that he has, 95. Like he doesn't really care. He's got a stout shield. He's going to trade efficiently with your supports. Yeah. But Kaka has so much offensive potential on this lion. And I think partially it's because Raven doesn't really do anything in this lane. Like Weaver is really good when you get him to level 7 before the enemy offlane can really do anything. Uh -huh. But if that's not the case, you're sort of just a useless hero. Yeah. Because Shikuchi has such a long cooldown that it's not really an escape. Like, if you click on it, it's 12 seconds long. Yeah. You can't play that offensively. I would say, like, even level 5, when you have, like, your Swarm, Geminate, and then at least level 3 Shikuchi, Weaver feels pretty good, but... Necrophos, Necrophos lanes in general just dominate the, the lane in the first four levels pretty heavily and they're just going to get a bunch of denies. That's going to keep Raven's uh, experience quite low. They are going to be able to take out the opposing sentry. They do manage to get a good stun onto Raven, but KP and Kaka with a big creep wave pushing into them don't try and challenge too much. Yeah. The key here is that the next career usage goes down to this bottom lane. You can't just give up on this treant. You can't just say, well, he's going to be invis. That's life for us. Right. And I would expect KP to continue to just hit these bugs with his teammate. Like, they're doing such a good job of that, just instantly getting him off. And it's good CS as well, that it's actually worth uh, 
a little bit more than a normal CS. SCC going for the kill onto RML, double leap, and does manage to secure that one. SCC, his Marana versus the Storm Spirit uh, Blitz you were actually talking about during the draft, how the Marana matches up really well against the Storm Spirit. Yeah. In the game, it's really nice for Storm. Like, the game feels fine for Storm, but in the lane, it's annoying because you have two, you have 285 move speed base. It's really hard to dodge arrow. Yeah. Like, at some point, you're going to get uh, dinked in the head by an arrow. And that's kind of just the way that the lane goes. And, and you sort of accept that. In, in general, mobility, like early mobility, is a problem for Storm Spirit, right? Yes. Like, he has the same problem against Quap. Any hero that can get on top of them. If you overcommit at all, you just die. Yeah. It's part of the issue. And with Storm, uh, the annoying thing is you sort of have to overcommit for CS. Because you have to step into the wave right. to Remnant just to get CS. So you're just naturally in a bad position. Faith yeah. smoked up, trying to go for a five-minute bounty rune. Does throw down a ward but won't be able to secure that one. We are still going to have the split. All these lanes that have double nukes are almost always just going to be really nice against Storm mm. because of how he has to step into the lane. Yeah. But you have to think of this hero more as pretty much a melee because you just walk in Remnant. Yeah, and he comes forward trying to get a Remnant, and that is perfect yeah. range for Disruption. Leading See? into the arrow should be an easy one-two punch for SCC. Actually, uh, they're going to split it. Looks like the creep grabbed it, so they're both going to get a 150 each for that one. Bottom lane, Cuckoo does manage to get off the heel and uh, does manage to get a bonk there on the Kaka. They're going to be able to run him down. It looks like he takes out from the Leech Seed. Cuckoo keeps pushing forward. KP is forced to use that Ghost Round to dodge any further damage. Yeah, he pops his invincibility ability. <laughs> Look at Fate. He's setting up for round two. They're, they really just don't want to let uh, Armel get his level six. But he should not go back in the lane. Yeah, he's just going to play jungle. I would even maybe advocate for him to go raindrops here. Then it's harder for the Marana to kill you. Yeah. He is almost level 6 though. It's just a tick of XP. I think he's like one off. A battle at the bottom lane. KP does manage to get a Ghost Shroud off. The physical damage not going to be there. But Cuckoo really brilliant body blocking. Does manage to slow down KP's retreat just enough. So Raven and Cuckoo can get the kill. Now that the Weaver's level 4, things are beginning to pick up. SCC actually rotating down to the bottom lane a little bit late to that fight. I guess we'll now take over the lane. But still, Raven is going to be able to get something. Top oh, lane, Fugi died? He died to a Crystal Maiden Underlord lane. That is certainly not supposed to happen. My guy, Moogs, what are you doing? Oh, no. He's even got the non-greedy build. Where Kaka really getting hunting. super aggressive. Does get the bucks on top of him. They're going to try and go for the kill onto Cuckoo, but Kaka's going to die at the same time. Maybe the Invis can go on time. No, SCC still managed to pick up the kill. Raven, seeing a high-level Marana, he actually does try and challenge him a little bit. This is the problem with playing against uh, Tree, is that at some point your supports give up on buying wards. Uh huh. Because you need a sentry everywhere, and he sort of just wins the war of attrition battle against you. Yeah. I'm sure it'd be really good against teams like Liquid. Just because Kuro refuses to buy sentries. <laughs> <laughs> like, GH sure is how he's buying them. <laughs> See, the. Uh, it's also just like the, the, the economy war as well, right? Yeah. Like, Tree and Protector just. He out damages you. He outheals you because of Leech Seed. It's just like value trade-offs every single time you go for these little clashes. Storm's just farming jungle, which is what you should do on this hero right now. Would you say this is... Uh, I was kind of thinking about some of the heroes that are quite good right now, and it, they seem very focused on the laning phase, but I think it's the, the efficiency or economy aspect of the laning phase that makes them so good. For example, Crystal Maiden, free mana to be able to spam. A lot of damage here onto Moogie. Moogie does manage to get a time walk off, but still. That was really cool how they set that up. They've got a nice combination of the ensnare stun as well as the frostbite bottom lane. Raven does manage to run down Kaka SCC, who was still in the neighborhood, tried to land an arrow. Futile attempt, though, against that fast-moving bug. I really like this move, though, down by SCCC to this bottom lane. He's going to give KP the farm just because the, the Necro is going to win you this game. Mm. Like, Storm is really good against Marana, so at some point, your hero's just... The matchup's not really going to work out in your favor. Right. As we saw in the VP versus Optic game, right? Yeah. And so, you have to sort of recognize your role in the game at that point. And it's to allow this Necro to catch up, because he was a little bit behind in levels. Just because this line is taking up a lot of XP, Kaka. 
It does seem like we're getting a lot greedier with our offlaners. Like uh, here, we've got the Necrophos offlane. Um, an earlier game, we had Weaver offlane. It seems like we're a lot more focused on some cores that scale a lot better into late game. And it seems like this overall would just be a smart plan of being able to move your offlaner to a, a better position to get him into a good mid game uh, farm. Yeah. Most of it here is just going to be like who is the most important here in the game. Like that's how you're going to sacrifice. Dota nowadays, especially since like the past like three years, is less about the player and it's more just whose hero is going to win you the game overall, who's going to be more effective as time goes on. Uh, you want to try to prioritize that person's farm as much as you can. Like this void, I don't think they care about making sure that Mugi has the best game. If you can tell, just because he's going to be a chrono. Kaka kills Cuckoo, but Kaka will end up trading That is out. so confusing. <laughs> the uh, 10 minute bounty runes coming up. They're going to try and fight over it. They do manage to get the kill onto the crystal lane and get out SCC. Don't forget about that bounty. Sam H will uh, find to his dismay that one of them is going to be missing. Jump away from our... Well, that was kind of close. KP almost got a range of the Reaper's sight. Armel suffering quite a bit in his net worth due to the fact that he was forced to go jungle so early. And even now, matched up against the offlane Necrophos, who's now taken over the mid lane, Necrophos is still keeping him on the back foot. I mean, Storm can't do anything in this lane, because you can't kill. Yeah. You don't really have kill potential, so you're just sort of sitting there watching the Necro out-trade you, essentially. Cuckoo comes to the mid lane now. Try and lend Armel a helping hand. Would you say, so if the Necrophos is the winning hero, Oh, Moogie's just gonna... He's gonna oh. go for it! He just Chronosphere to the Underlord! He does have a lion coming lion. in from behind. He does have a big burst of damage that is required to bring down Sam H. So, you can see why that Chronosphere was used. Back over the mid lane, though. Crystal Maiden, Tim's interrupted. The Reaper Sight stops that freezing field, and they do manage to get the counter kill. So, two pickups for Newbie. The kill at top, and then manage to stop the aggression in middle and claim a support life there as well. You notice, by the way, that uh, we're just talking about these heroes and how they work, like what heroes win you the game, what heroes won't. They don't really focus on this Weaver, uh -huh. because what is the Weaver going to do? If he gets chronoed once in the game, the fight just sort of, it just ends. Like, there's no, that, that's kind of the problem with playing Weaver against Faceless Void, is that at some point, he will chrono you, uh -huh. and you're just going to die. You don't really want to build Aeon Disc on this hero, like, you want to continue to be offensive, because you have an ability that makes, you have two abilities that give you defensive. Uh, capabilities. So if he's not the winning hero, would you say this Storm Spirit is? Yeah, which is why they're trying to just allow Armel to play whatever game that he wants. Mm -hmm. um, but it it does mean that the supports are kind of left without a game. Like, right. you, if you're a support on the side of TNC, you're not feeling super good. Because you're not really sure where you're supposed to be. Whereas newbies, newbies' goals are just a little bit easier to work around. Yeah. They, like, whenever you have an offlane like Underlord, you very often will not have a big playmaker yeah. as a support that you can work around. And that's why KP is down here at bottom, because he knows it's the free lane. Yeah. He's like, there's no, there's just nobody that's going to be here. Nobody plays in the safe lane anymore. Uh, you just switch sides of the map. But it seems like at the same time, Newbie are still able to play in their safe lane, uh, in part because they have this Wily Faces Void that's, that's hard to be able to bring down. Yeah. They've got three heroes that are like that. You just have three heroes on the side of Newbie that you don't feel entirely comfortable going for a gank on. So does that mean you're expecting this laning phase lead that they currently have at yeah, 3k? for sure. And the way that TNC plays this game now is that you just let the Storm take over this top area. Like, okay. all of this is now his. Which is why Newbie has placed these two wards pretty aggressively towards this top side. Uh huh. But you just allow the Storm to take this map. Uh, like, if I'm a Storm player, I feel pretty comfortable right now. You don't feel great, but... You feel a lot better than you did two minutes ago. Faith gets a good aggressive ward, lending a helping hand to SCC. He's going to try and take this mid-tier 1 tower. They're going to try and force it here. They don't want to let that living armor get the regeneration off, and they don't. TNC, Cuckoo comes in, does manage to get a really good overglow with a lot of damage coming in from behind. Raven, oh no, Moogie completely whisked the Chronosphere, and as a result, Armel is going to run down the mid-player of SCC, turn around SCC, is going to manage to get a kill onto Armel with the help of the Reaper Scythe from KP. Still, what a whiff from Moogie. That was a guaranteed Weaver kill, as you were alluding to earlier. One Chronosphere, and he should die. Well, it doesn't work if you don't land that Chronosphere. 
There was the caveat of <laughs> you've got to hit it. You've got to hit the giant ball on the bug. Oh man, there's just a lot of different he ways that slow down. Kaka needs to be able to help him out. Tries to hit a stun. Doesn't hit the Weaver though, and now he's going to be caught by Raven. He's already dead. Mookie has to back up. Faith chased away as well, but they know KP. He didn't run to the tier two. He ran to the jungle instead, and is now going to be chased down by Raven. Doesn't look like his heal's going to be up in time. Raven on an unstoppable spree, and remember, he was the guy who had the toughest landing phase of all on the side of TNC. Oh, all of that just begins from the fact that Mugi whiffs his big team fight ult. They can no longer take that fight at that point. I think SCCC really relied on him yeah. to hit that. He he had full faith in his teammate. <laughs> He's like, Mugi, you got this. He's like, yeah, I know, man. <laughs> hey, do, do a little fist bump or something. Yeah, like, like, Remember the TI days, bro? My guy just went for an alley-oop, got left hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but nets. Oh. Well, you could see the aggression that came out from TNC as soon as that, like on that second fight, there was like, there's no Chronosphere. We just keep running at oh, them, no. even underneath TNC the tower. Getting... Faith, he's going to be caught. Okay, chased away. They've got the invisibility of the Marana. Moonlight Shadow allows Newbie to be able to retreat. Still, that's something that TNC force out of Newbie, and maybe they can continue to be aggressive, as you can see, Cuckoo. He's maintaining his position in this middle lane. Needs to be able to cross over to the other trees if he wants to be able to catch KP out with a leading disable. The rest of his team starts making their way forward. He's going to bomb KP1, slowing him down. Sam H is going to be trying to catch up. Managed to get a good amount of damage there from the Firestorm, especially with KP. Now with the overgrowth on the top, but a disruption buys KP a lot of time. And this is still a tough hero to bring down. 1300 HP, Glimmer Cape, as well as that Ghost Shroud and Heal. Man, if you're newbie, it's like part of the issue. Nuisance. When you make when you make whiffs like that, uh -huh. is you're scared to try again. <laughs> you start becoming a. Uh, yeah, you start second like, guessing yourself. You think to yourself, like, man, we really should have won that fight. Like, uh -huh. does that mean we can no longer take team fights? Yeah. That is not what that means, newbie. It just means you've got to you've got to hit your spells. Well, they do have that that big spell back up again. Uh, Chronosphere is up. Reaper Scythe is up. Only thing yeah. they don't have is Moonlight Shadow. You notice what the storm's doing, by the way? He's farming exactly like we talked about. Yeah. He's just taking this area. It's by far the most comfortable spot on the map for storm spirits to farm. Okay, so we, we've gone over this several times. Sure. You know, invade the enemy safe lane, take over their jungle. Why isn't Newbie doing the same? It seems like they're actually trying to play around their own jungle quite a bit. I think it's because... I'm not sure, actually. Maybe their core just don't feel comfortable anymore. This is a good, th this is what you want. You want to smoke when you have Chrono up like this? Oh, Sam H in position? Nice! Breaks the smoke, TP's out. Alright, that's like, you know that Mugi was, uh, he was just like, he was a little bit not so confident about <laughs> he, that. Uh, he was very happy that he successfully pressed the stop button in time. Yeah. <laughs> if he had two whiffed Chronospheres, oh man. Thing, man. Faith, they're going to be able to catch a disruption into an arrow. Nice and easy, KP will take the extra 30 seconds onto Raven with that Reaper's Scythe. Actually, it's only level 2, so... Yeah, Glimmer Cape, by the way, on this Necrophos, because we talked about all... Yeah. It's just a whole lot of magic damage. I think the, the added little help of um, going invis and taking out the bugs... Oh man, that always oh, is yes. super useful. That's Jump up the top lane! I think Kaka knows that he's just always going to be Moogie on, but Moogie managed to land the two-man Chronosphere. It's going to take the first one out. Easy Storm Spirit kill. Can he get Cuckoo? No. Why are we that hyped about that bash? It was like a hex target. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a confidence. I mean, <laughs> you with the last one, you got to get hype. Yeah, yeah. About the little thing. I hope he watches this game. He's got no idea what we're saying, but he hears the excitement in Maybe our Maybe KP can translate for him. For sure. Be all you can be, Moogie. Right now, we've got TNC. Uh, actually, TNC are still behind Newbie. Man, it just doesn't feel like it the way that they're like kind of controlling the map. It feels like they're being pretty aggressive, but they're still 2K down to Newbie. And uh, Newbie also have the top three net worth cores. How is this happening, Blitz? I mean, they're just farming right now. They've been. That's what they were doing for the past like 
uh, four or five minutes. So you think TNC isn't putting enough effort into farming, or? I don't know, it's a weird game because they don't really have play, they don't have normal playmakers. Because the Storm is supposed to win you this game, but at the same time, he's your only way to get kills. Yeah. Which is why they're giving him, they're giving him this like inordinate amount of space around this top area. Like I'll just keep alluding to that because it, it kind of gives you the idea of how they want to play. Yeah. But at the same time, like you're not gonna win this Weaver versus Void battle. Like you really don't feel good if you're this Weaver. You can't just rely on Moogie to whiff. That's not a that's not a good way to play the game. Newbie just keep on going for the contest here in their own jungle. Three man smoke up. KP. He knew. That he I'm knows Cuckoo's though. here. He's gonna get caught now, but Newbie, the rest of them, right behind. Managed to get the disruption. Are you gonna throw out an arrow? SCC decides against it. If they can just hold here without Chrono, this would be sick by them. Because TNC doesn't really just want to waste time here. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the downside of Underlord, I think, in this meta, is that you just have a hero that you have to sort of win team fights around him. Uh -huh. And his contribution is that he makes all of your other heroes just slightly stronger. Mm. And he's not a hero that can go out and catch somebody. Like, for example, moogie has been farming out this bottom lane while Nubie are holding without the Chronosphere. Yeah. And you can't just on it. Underlord. Oh, SCC tries to go for He gets snatched in the mid-air by Armel. He's going to keep on going, finding Kaka as well. Turns around, manages to get off the Hex. He does have Finger of Death as well. No Impale. So he's going to be run down. Armel. Picks up yet another kill. He is now 3-4 and 2. He's going to be finishing up that Orchid pretty quick. And that will make Newbie's life a whole lot harder for every single one of their cores. Yeah, that's why you see this Manta style first item on Moogie. Mm -hmm. Although I feel like he might be better served just going BKB. It's really good against the Roots, I guess. Yeah. Nah, Manta's a really good item choice here. Gets bugs off. Got Frostbite as well. Yeah, I could see it for this Marana as well. But yeah. he's being really cautious here. I guess he, they don't really lack for damage. And in a way, he can... Like his... You said Necrophos is the guy who's going to win you the game. Void is also going to do that. So he can be more of like a mid-game buffer yeah. with that BKB build. He's just going to want people to go on him. Maybe like a false flag. Leading things off on a Sam H. They're hoping to be able to get a Reaper Scythe kill, and they'll get it too. Finger of Death and Reaper Scythe both being used to bring down the tanky Sam H Underlord. Now, can they do Roshan off of this? They certainly got the physical damage. Moogie gets hit by a bug on his way in, but Noobie are not shying down. They're going to keep going for this. If they have Chrono and no Underlord, like Underlord represents such an inordinate amount of their net worth. Yeah. He's barely behind. Uh, this Void, so why would you take the fight when you don't have your second highest net worth hero? So they're going to need some good harassment coming out from Tim's Crystal Maiden. Slam out from Roshan, gets Newbie a little bit lower. Roshan dropping fast, Cuckoo getting a position now. Tries to get a Frostbite onto the Faces Void, nailed by the arrow, and it looks like Tim's will end up going down. Roshan is still available, but TNC, they're bleeding out some heroes. Do manage to get the Orchid, good disruption out. Faith saving his Moogie, and now they're going to find a Train Protector who was on the other side of things. Now he's pretty fast, though. Lay down another Sentry, not quite going to get there. Tim's with a buyback. They really want to be able to contest this Roshan. KP blinks out of the pit to be able to spot Armel. Roshan down to 650. HP, it's just about to go down. It looks like TNC have given it up. They no longer can take this fight. Arrow actually landing on a Cuckoo. That was a blind one from SEC and cleans up the kill. Thanks to a double damage that spawned at the 22 minute marker. That thing just made Roshan and that kill a lot easier for Newbie. My guy with his model good looks. Devilishly good plays and looks. You just wouldn't it's expect got, it. It's yeah. a little unfair. It is. It's one of those things where, like, you grow up and you think you've got your special thing. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I may not be handsome, but I'm, you know, smart or I'm funny or something. And then you run to that guy who's all of it, you know? Super Chad. And you're just like, but what do I got? <laughs> well, I'm good at video games. No, SEC has that too. Sorry. Sorry, nerd. SEC is... That hits, like, way too close to home for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it hits too close for all of us. Blitz. It's all good. He's a good dude. So he yeah. deserves all the success. No, that makes it worse. Because then he's got a good personality too. Yeah, but why couldn't he be an asshole? Good people deserve good things. Okay. 5k net worth lead now for newbie. 13 to 15. And all three of their cores are... Because uh, they know that if the storm shows on the map at all, uh, they don't have to be worried. Because nobody else can make a play. 
So you can be a little bit greedier. And now you can even be more so because SCCC has his defensive item. This Void has his defensive item. This Necro is his own defense. I mean, he had his defensive item a long time ago, right? With the Glimmer Cape. Yeah. Feels like a pretty good choice. His defensive item is existing. That's true. Go Shroud. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Sick. Just a button that slows you down, gives you extra healing, oh, and prevents the enemy from being able to attack you. It just does so much. Okay, they're gonna run into a free tree protector kill. They will blow both of those abilities. Again, finger of death, reaper scythe. It Why helps not? just because the added respawn timer, you don't need to worry about your own cooldowns. This so game much. is 24 minutes long. This tree is dead for a minute. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, he's not having a whole lot of fun. Is he? Oh, man, he's getting close to level 18, too, where he'll have the 45-second added respawn timer. He's going to have his Aghanim Scepter, too, here in a second. I don't remember what pro player tweeted this, but they did make kind of a good point. He was like, he said, you know, if, uh, if lowering death timers those talents, mm -hmm. those were OP, then why, why, why is adding death timers not OP? It's kind of funny. That's a good point. I like that. Yeah. Shout out to whoever made that joke. Yeah. Uh, Manta almost done for SCC, so he will have the double answer to Storm Spear. He'll have the Manta to get rid of Overgrowth. He'll have the BKB for the Orchid. Whatever order he needs to use it, he's got it. Yeah. Right now, if you're TNC, I think you just have to rely a little bit on Newbie to make an error. And you're just, like, uh, I feel like they've kind of missed their timing to own the game yeah. in this mid-game, so it feels like they're going to have to rely on just, like, the pure Armel late-game carry. Yeah, you see Raven's problem is that he doesn't, I don't think he feels good about buying any of these items. He's like, I need HP to survive the Void, but there's no real amount of HP that'll save me. Yeah. And so I'll get this Lincolns, because it'll be good against this Lion, but it's still garbage against Void. Yeah. There's just no real winning here, because if you get Chronoed into Arrowed, and they just pop your, uh, they pop your Lincolns with a mana drain. You're just gonna get Necrolton anyways. So this is gonna come a little bit more down to his play style. He just can't show at the start of a fight, right? Yeah, you've got to make sure that the Chrono is. But uh, that's part of the problem too, is that you sort of, like, so one of your two mobile heroes has to tank the Chrono, mm. or you just have to outfight them. But they don't have good instant jump aside from the storm, like yeah. this. This Underlord, you're not supposed to, I don't think you're supposed to be this far behind because now he doesn't really provide you a way to start the fight. He just provides you a way to exit the fight and kind of survive the fight. Yeah, if he had like Greaves as well as Crimson Guard done, then like that's a significant amount of sustain that would help you survive through the Chronosphere. Bottom lane does go down, but they beat it up the tower! Kaka sets it all up, Blink Hex, they get the Reaper Scythe on him as well. By the way, that is seconds. a level 3 Reaper Scythe and added 45 seconds. Whew. Uh, was it worth it, Armel? Surely not. Mugi still has, and, and this, is, this is the best part about it, is that Mugi still has his Chrono, and uh, Reaper Scythe is almost going to be up again. Uh-huh. Disruption on Sam H. They do manage to have the blink hit on the face, locking him down for a while, but SCC comes in from the side, already getting the damage as well as the stun on his Sam H. He's gonna try and go for the retreat, see if he gets the Dark Rift away, but he's stopped by Kaka. Now they're gonna be able to catch Tim's as well. This Crystal Maiden he is so slow. Slow. He goes into the Oh no! The Agon of 99 that seconds. Reaper Scythe is up again, and now you've got two heroes that are dead for almost a minute and some keep the hits coming. That is the danger of this Aghanim Scepter Reaper Scythe. It just snowballs so quickly. Yep. You get one pick off, next thing you know. The scariest part is, once again, there's still Chronosphere. And the Reaper Scythe is about to be up. So you can't even take this fight, even if you want to. Yeah. The hope is that if they use the Chrono into a bunk situation, and you can take something like a buyback fight and go for Roshan, because Aegis is the counter to Chrono, right? It's like right. you just have a second life. But that possibility doesn't really exist. Another Reaper Scythe kill. That's going to be You're cuckoo. dead for 90. Now we've got three people who have all died to the Reaper Scythe and are still not back up. Storm Spirit in five seconds. But that is going to be far too many seconds as the Team Snoopy have already cleaned up both Tier 3s and are going to take the melee racks at bottom lane. First. KP just deleted people for like four minutes, by the way. Yeah. Good timing. Stun, follow up arrow onto Sam H. They have another Reaper Scythe. No, it's 12 seconds. 
Uh, now I just want to see Reaper size. <laughs> <laughs> just get everyone out of the game. Permanently. Get that minute and a half buyback. <laughs> or death spawn. Alright, well, that's going to be two lanes of racks. They can't go for the final lane. It's just Rax, hilarious just how long it is. You're a Crystal Maiden player. Your life's not good. Yeah. You're level 13. You're watching this game go by you. You don't even have a Glimmer Cape, and suddenly the game tells you that you're dead for a minute and a half, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, all you can do is spam your chat wheel. Very cool of you. 99 seconds. <laughs> it's like, Kaka's going to die, and he's going to be dead for like 30 seconds. Yeah. And Tim's is gonna watch that and just uh, life's never fair, man. <laughs> this is there's there's a there's an allegory or some metaphor in here uh -huh. that I'm just not clever enough to see. Radiance bottom shrine has fallen. Butterfly or the faceless void. Maybe you just go straight for it. No BKB necessary. All right. Well, I, at this point in time, we're pretty much waiting for newbie. To screw up in a monumental fashion or for them to just finish out the game because they are two lanes of racks ahead by 30 minutes 16k gold lead and they probably have the better late game as well yeah I think they definitely have the better late game because just you have two heroes that don't want to play against chrono yeah which is why it's kind of crazy that they were just like third pick storm what can you do <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that was confident <laughs> That was irrationally confident. Uh -huh. Well, what can they do? Well, they pick a support that uh, can instant disable you and disable for you for a long time. They pick a hero that wins the lane against you. Oh, and they pick a trump card against you as well in the Faceless Void. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems like pretty good answers. Yeah, so now he's going for Yasha, but he's going to build back into Diffusal. It's just none of it feels good. I see people go Scotty all the time. To try to, like, maybe if I just pump out enough HP. Yeah. Or, like, just stat. Let, let's be stat heavy. The problem is, is, like, the... Especially as a Weaver, because you're not going, like, these raw tank items. You're going some sort of, like, Lincolns. You know, it gives you a little bit of uh, HP as well. Something else is that Void in these sort of games, they're just going to out-TPS you. Yeah. You get 500 health, well, he's going to get another 100 damage. He'll keep pace. No problem. They're just going to march down this top area. I think it just goes to show you how far ahead they think they are, that they don't need the chrono. Uh -huh. Like, they're like, Moogie, it's all good, man. Don't You don't even need to throw them. Keep that game face on. Top shrine is under attack. Cuckoo. Sentries, wards all over the place. Reaper Psych, not quite enough to be able to finish off Tim's. Does get the heal, as well as the protection of the pipe. Not nearly enough. Yeah, KP overestimated his Dagon 1. That did nothing. Did he get glimmered as well or something? No. Yeah. Don't have, or he got pipe. It was just pipe. Pipe plus uh, tree. Yeah, that's Plus tree armor. The Reaper Scythe did no damage. Even without that, he was not at half HP. Oh, guy just got the mana cost, or mana loss. First yeah. Time. That is. Helpful. The game is not going to last long enough for that GPM to pay off. <laughs> Plus 25% shadow poison damage. I hate that. When I play Storm and Crystal Maiden players that I know, it's like, come on. That talent was made. It's like a pairing. Yeah, it's made for Storm's right? There's like no other hero that better utilizes that. Yeah. So if you're a Crystal Maiden player and you have somebody that plays Storm a lot, do it up. Arrow's gonna whiff. They're just trying to take control of this area and then go into Roshan. TNC is aware of that though, which is why they've sent the creep in. Hellbear Smasher, Shadow Poison wakes up Roshan and goes and pounds the Hellbear Smasher. That seems ult. really unfair that he just he took it out on that. Yeah. Just innocent bystander. They're just pinging the area. I think they want somebody. So they're gonna smoke. They've got Aeon Disc and a gem on their lion. Dagon 2. Daedalus for SCC. Okay, maybe if they walk a little bit to the left. Yeah. Run into Sam H. They're going to be able to blink initiate on a hit. The arrow will miss, but they certainly have enough damage. They'll Reaper Sight them just to make sure. Now he does have buyback. 
first time in a while that we've actually had a buyback. Ooh, good blink there from Cuckoo just in time. And he's got, he's supposed to be the tankiest person on their team. He's got a lot of... Oh, and the Chronosphere actually catches two. Now, he does make a little bit of an error there with the Mantle Illusion blocking himself up. They're still going to be able to get the Disable on to Raven. Should be able to keep it on disc. Procking there to prevent Armel from picking up the support pretty oh, easily. Get out. And now he's running out of mana. Almost completely out. Is going to get blown up. And Newbie just keep racing forward. The buyback from Armel might be able to catch something though. A lot of here is dropping low. Moogie almost gets caught, but does manage to time walk just ahead. Faith gets the ghost after off. Okay, never mind. His TP is going to be canceled. He will be the only victim of all of those buybacks though from TNC. That is certainly not enough for them to feel good about this game. Man, that aggression. This is like the Newbie of old. They're playing this very well. They're baiting you with their timings. The team fight, Kaka is just a sniper with this lion right now. It's just a perfect mix of aggression so far. Yeah. It is item choice. The early blink dagger and then this and this. Is, they've got all in for this. They're just, they can't fight when Chrono's up. Arrow, gonna be blocked by one of the Weaver illusions. I, I'm kind of okay with this attempt, but I can't see it paying off just because they can't kill Roshan fast enough. Yeah. This Weaver doesn't deal that much damage. And this is, I mean, it feels like we're uh, beating it to death, but just can't play this game. Yeah, I'm not a Shadow Demon's back up. Yeah, that's what you start to look for in a draft now, is like, how do these heroes interact? Who's the, who kind of wins you the game? Can that person be countered? How easy is it for that person to be countered? Mm -hmm. Well, Chrono is a fat bubble. And it's only going to get bigger. If he gets that level 25, he's right now level 22. Now my man Boogie's gonna get the 25 backtrack, and they're gonna say, "How'd you miss that chrono?" He's like, 25 backtrack. <laughs> that is it's Underlord. This is all he's doing at this point. He's helmet dominating, and then he's running creeps down a lane to try and stop the creep wave from pushing forward. It doesn't work as well when you've been <laughs> laned in two lanes. Yeah. Does not work nearly as well. All right. Well, now newbie is doing Roshan. Maybe this is the opportunity for TNC to strike. Cuckoo is in position. He has the blink dagger. He has the overgrowth. Okay, I want to see it. Roshan down to half health. Quarter HP now. 2,800 HP. Newbie get rid of the bugs first. He's got a little vision. Dark Wave to the other side, but they already made the initiation. They've already blown up Armel. Oh, now they've no. caught extra. The Crystal Man's going to go down as well. Sam H they came in from the Chrono. other side, but still. Raven? Dodge the arrow. Now it's going to be the Chronosphere onto Raven. Overgrowth out, but Mookie still at the BKB and SCC was on the outside. So TNC will finally call it. Game one. Pretty handily went to Newbie. I would say they, they just felt like really in control even that time that it felt like TNC was being aggressive and they were owning more of the map it actually turned out the network was favorable to newbie at that I mean, time. they had to make that play because the chrono whiffed yeah but once the chrono is online you just can't take fights I think that's the 